This video is going to talk about cavities or dental caries. It's when there's decay that eats away at a tooth. And we're going to go through the different sizes and shapes and locations where we find these when we're in the office. Um, let's just kind of go through a diagram real quickly showing where decay uh, is typically going to be. Either one, it's going to be in this area on the biting surface. We call it a pit and fissure cavity. Uh, if it's right where the floss goes, we call it a smooth surface cavity. Or a lot of times we just call it an interproximal cavity cavity because it's right between the teeth and then sometimes they're deeper down onto the actual root and so that's a root decay a root you know root cavity and decay always progresses from small to large and so over time what you'll see is this uh, cavity starts off small but then it goes a little bit deeper then it goes deeper and wider and deeper and wider still as it approaches towards the pulp of the tooth and so it's easy to fix them when they're here typically just a filling but when they get to be larger like this now we're talking about probably having to do a crown, maybe even a root canal in order to save this tooth. So let's kind of go through some examples of what we see clinically. Now this is what we typically see in our office. We just see these smaller areas of decay. Now when we get in there, they're gonna be much larger than this. They're probably gonna take up about, I'm kind of outlining it here, about this much decay surface is how big the filling is gonna be. Um, this one might be more kind of a, in a plus sign shape or, um, um, across the shape right there. But you can see this up here. I mean, this, this uh, cavity has eaten away this tooth so much that there's no enamel even left on the tooth. Same thing over here. And then here, it just has decay interproximally between the teeth. It just has, uh, this person has all kinds of decay problems. The surprising part, however, is what we found is patients who come in with this, they don't have any pain and they don't report ever having any pain with these teeth. Um, you would think that if you have a deep cavity, it's going into the pulp or at least getting very close to the pulp, uh, like these clearly are, uh, you think that would be hurting them, but for some reason it doesn't. So pain doesn't always equate to size of cavity. Okay. Uh, pain has to do with the health of the pulp and you can actually have decay going into the pulp and they still don't even feel it. Here, you're going to see somebody who has decay, again, interproximally right here between the teeth, but also right here on the front. I mean, right where the toothbrush would go, they still get a cavity there. You can see there's decalcification beginning right there. This tooth, perfectly fine. A little white spot, but it looks like a pretty solid tooth. Decalcification. Uh, I can just see the edge of decay on that one, decay down here. Yet that tooth is perfectly pristine. So why do some teeth get cavities and some don't when they seem to be uh, right there, exposed to the same uh, food, the same uh, home care, just that's the way some teeth respond. Here's a cavity down here on the biting surface and then here interproximately. Of course, a chunk of tooth has broken off. I don't think this decay caused this smooth line. I think they may have gotten decay first and then it weakened the enamel, they bit down on something and then broke a piece of enamel off. And then the decay, of course, just gets into this dentin layer, which is the next layer in from the enamel. And that is real, real soft and that seems to progress rather quickly. When it's in the enamel, it's kind of slow, but once it hits the, uh, the dentin layer, the next layer in, that's when it becomes, uh, it's faster moving at that point. When we look at x-rays, uh, this is just a diagram uh, showing kind of what we might see looking in. Uh, at x-rays, but this is why we take bite wings or PA x-rays. As we can see, if it's a small cavity, it looks like this, and then of course it gets bigger, and then here you can see it's gone in through the enamel, and then once it hits that dentin enamel layer, it kind of spreads along the dentin layer as it continues to move deeper in towards the tooth. Uh, here you can see it's getting close to the pulp, and here you can see the decay has actually gotten into the pulp and has caused an infection or an abscess down here at the root tip. You can also see there's decay down here. More, see, like this is between the teeth. This is also between the teeth, but now this is down underneath the gum line. So this is actually on the root of the tooth. So that's what we see on x-rays. Here's some uh, real clinical examples. This looks very faint, but that is a cavity right there. Look, they already had a cavity with a filling that's been fixed, or a, a filling has fixed this cavity. Uh, now they have a new area of decay, and there's one right next door. Here's an area that's gone through the enamel, and now it's gotten bigger. Now it's even gotten, like I said, into the dental layer. And so this is going to be a very large area of decay. Probably will need a crown in this case. Smaller area of decay, this one probably just needs a filling. Here's just a hint of an area of decay. That's probably just going to be a filling. Here's root decay. You can tell this is a wisdom tooth leaned on its side. This is why we like to have a wisdom teeth taken out. Because not only is this wisdom tooth not providing any chewing surface, but now it has caused a problem with this second molar. If this tooth was gone, this would have never happened. Now this patient's gonna end up losing this tooth and this tooth. So it would have been better to just get this tooth taken out from the beginning. 
here's what um, here's another large area of decay. But here's what it looks like if you had a tooth and you took it out of the mouth and then you just cut it lengthwise, like cut it right down the middle to kind of peel it apart to look at the you know the inner half of it to see what does a cavity look like. You know, when we look at an x-ray, how does this match up with what's actually going on with the tooth? You can see right here, it's right between the teeth. It's interproximal. It starts off, looks like it's pretty narrow right here. But once it gets through the enamel, and now it's this line right here shows the difference between the enamel and the dentin. As soon as it gets the dentin, it spreads laterally or it spreads up and down. And then look at this. It doesn't shoot horizontally across, but it actually makes kind of a line right towards the pulp. The way the tooth is built, it has these little tiny itty bitty tubes. There's thousands of them, dentin tubes is what they are, or dentin tubules, and they emanate. They kind of go out like sunbeams out from the pulp. And so when decay gets into this area, it almost follows those little tubes, like little tiny straws going right down to the pulp. And so that's why we want to get to these cavities early, because as soon as they hit this area, they're going to travel rather quickly to get to the pulp. Uh, let's see, one more example. Here's actually decay that you can get underneath crowns. Here's actually a crown right there, and there's decay that's gotten underneath that. Here's another crown, decay underneath it. There's decay underneath that one. Um, this one has all sorts of problems. They have overhangs of amalgam. Uh, that doesn't belong there. This little ledge doesn't belong there. Filling should be nice and smooth. They should be like this. They should be like that. Uh, they've got tartar buildup on these areas. But here's an area of decay right underneath this filling. So you can get them underneath... Uh, uh, silver fillings, you get them underneath crowns. Here's a tooth colored filling and around the edges you can start to see there's some brown stuff creeping in right there. That's where the uh, the composite and the enamel have kind of lost that seal that's open and now bacteria is getting inside there and that bacteria is causing decay. So that's a quick rundown on decay. What we see on x-rays, what we see clinically and it's such a good idea to take care of it while it's small because it's really easy and less costly than if you wait and treat it when it's uh, bigger. Uh, also one last thing again, Dental pain doesn't always mean, or I should say this way, lack of dental pain doesn't mean that there isn't a problem. So when you're talking with patients and they say, well, it doesn't hurt, I'll wait till it hurts. They have to know that if they're waiting until it hurts, now you're talking root canal, maybe even extraction at that point. So uh, anyways, we like to get it treated before it hurts. And sometimes, as we saw at the very beginning, some of those teeth can get so bad that they may not even be savable, but they never hurt along the way. So pain and necessity for work, those two things are unrelated. We have to take care of our cavities as we see them both on x-rays and visually when we look at the teeth in the mouth. All right, thanks.